it's just a, it's a tremendous privilege and a tremendous joy to be here today. And um, I'm, I'm just shaking. And this is our children's sermon. And I realize the importance of this, children. You are so important to God and to us. But in that importance, we must teach you about God. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, this last week, what I did, fathers, pay attention to this. I have what's called a, we've started something of a family catechism. It's based on the Westminster, the 1689 London uh, confession and the catechisms that came from that, from the early Baptist. And what I've done is I've expanded on the truths that are there. In this, we're, we're touching actually what is the chief end of man. Now, your children are not going to get everything I'm going to teach them. That is why it is the primary responsibility of the father to teach the children. It is your duty. If you do become a part of this body, you will be held accountable. You will be asked. If you are teaching and discipling your wife, teaching and discipling your children, if you're holding them up in prayer, men will hold you accountable. It is your duty. But it's a glorious duty. It's absolutely wonderful that we have the privilege of doing this. So, I only have 15. I didn't expect uh, this many families. But if you're the head of a family, please take one of these. Uh, you can even do that now. I'll just kind of pass these out. And... Uh, this can take up part of, of your Bible study with your children, and it can take up part of Scripture memory. Uh, as we go along, I'm going to add memory verses and things like that. And uh, because it is our obligation to teach our children. How many of you are excited about that? Raise your hand. Those of you who don't raise your hand, I'll be visiting you in your home. Okay? Now, let's go to the first question. What is, now children, this is for you, listen, what is the chief end of man? Okay? And the answer is this, the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Now some of you children are saying, well, what is a chief end? Well, some of the, the mothers and fathers are saying, what is a chief end right now? But you need to learn this, children. You do. More than you need to learn calculus, mathematics, more than you need to learn English literature, you must learn this. Now we're going to look at what is the meaning of chief end. And I've written down here, the chief end is the most important reason or purpose for your life. The chief end asks the question, why did God made you? make you? Why are you alive? Now, let's look at some of these questions. Why did God make you? Why? You need to ask this question. Why are you alive? Do you realize how many people live and die and never answer that question? How many people who go to church never answer this question biblically? And then the next question is this. What will make you most happy as a human being? Now, we need to be careful here because all the world is trying to find happiness. And sometimes those who are in Christianity say that's not a good thing. Well, both parties are wrong. It is wrong to seek for happiness in the world. It is your duty to seek for happiness in the Lord. Everything in the Lord. Remember what we learned last week? That Christ is Everything. Do you see that? He's not just part of your life. He is your life. And anything done outside of Him is just wrong. So you're to find happiness. You're to search for happiness. You're to, you're to expend energy to be happy. But to be happy in Jesus Christ. Do you see that? Now, let's look at some things. Actually, we're going to study some moral philosophy right now. Okay, young people, are you ready? Moral philosophy, but it's biblical. I want you to look. The first thing I have here is, I want you just to listen to this. All intelligent people should have a good reason for doing what they're doing. If you're an intelligent, a smart human being, 
you're going to have a reason for what you're doing. Let me give you an example. I've written here, we would not think it very reasonable or very smart if someone went to the store, but they didn't know why. If you walked up to someone in Walmart and you said, why are you here? And they said, I don't have the faintest idea why I'm here. You wouldn't think that person was very intelligent, would you? You've got to have a reason for being here. Now, let's say that you saw some man standing out in the rain. He's just standing out there in the rain. And you said, why are you standing out here in the rain? He said, I don't know. You would think this man has a problem in his head. Now, if he said something like this, well, I'm out in the rain because I like the rain. Well, at least that's a reason. Or maybe he could say, I'm out here in the rain with a bar of soap because my shower broke and I need to take a shower. That may not be a good reason, but it is a reason. But a man who does something with no reason at all is a very foolish man. Let me give you another example. A man's driving down the road and he has a flat tire. And I come up to him and I help him fix his tire and I go, by the way, where are you going? He says, I don't know where I'm going, I'm just going. I think that man should not be on the road. His mind is not well, do you see? So all of us should have a reason. Now, I've written here, if these things are true, if we should always have a reason for what we're doing, then we should also have a reason for being alive. How many people live and have no reason, no clue why they are alive. We need to ask some of these questions. Now listen, young people, listen. We need to, we need to ask these questions. Why do I exist? Why am I here? I mean, why? My father used to ask me, that head of yours, Paul, what do you, do you use it for anything other than a hat rack? There's got to be a reason for what you are, why you exist, and what you do. So we need to ask the question, why do I exist? What is the purpose of my life? In Peru, they say something very, very, well, it's kind of cutting, but it's also charming. They say, tu vives porque el aire es gratis. And what that means is, the only reason you're alive is because air is free. <laughs> you have no reason for being alive. We shouldn't be like that. We must have one great purpose for being alive. Here's another question. Why am I doing what I am doing with my life? Sometimes I like to go to a college student and ask him this. What are you going to do after college? He says, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get a job. Well, what are you going to do after that? Well, I'm going to make money. Well, what are you going to do after that? Well, I'm going to get married and, and maybe have some kids. Well, what are you going to do after that? Well, uh, you know, I'm going to retire. Or what are you going to do after that? Well, I guess I'm going to die. And what are you going to do after that? See, people don't ask these questions anymore. We are advanced in that we've got computers and we can send rockets to the moon. But the most important questions people have forgotten to ask. And that's where our problem is. Now, I want us to look at something else. Not only should you have a reason for doing what you're doing, but if you're really a smart child, you will choose the best reason for doing what you're doing. You should search and look to find the best reason for being alive. Do you know, I heard the story about an English lord one time who inherited a fortune. He was so wealthy, his parents left him so much money. And you know what the goal of his life was? This is the purpose of his life. He wanted to raise a hamster that had a perfect figure eight mark on its back. He spent his life breeding hamsters. Now, is that a good reason to be alive? It's not. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to be alive just to uh, play games? Do you want to be alive just to grow up and, and make money? Well, if you grow up and make money, you're still going to die and everyone testifies to the fact that money can't make you happy. Do you want to be famous? You won't be famous forever. Why are you alive? You need to decide what is the reason and you need to choose the best reason. Now, the scriptures say that the best reason for you to be alive, the reason why God made you was so that you would glorify Him and enjoy Him forever. 
Now we're going to end just by reading a few of these verses that talk about this. And then next week, I'm going to explain what does it mean to glorify God? Or how can we glorify God? But listen to some of the verses. We exist to glorify God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Isn't that amazing? When I, if I enjoy a glass of water, I should praise God for it. If I see a beautiful day, I should praise God for it. Everything I do, I should do it for Him and be thankful to Him. Why should you be kind to your brother and sister? Is it because they're your brother and sister? Not primarily. That's not the reason. The reason why you should always be kind to your brother and sister and honor your father and mother is not because of them, but because of God. You do it for the glory of God. If you do it for any other reason, do you know what that is? Idolatry. It also says in Psalms 115.1 that whenever we do something that is good, that is praiseworthy, that someone would say, oh, you're such a good little boy or you're such a good little girl. This is what we should say. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name, give glory because of your loving kindness, because of your truth. When someone says, man, you've done a great job, we should say thank you. But in our hearts, we should also say to God, not not to me, Lord, this Thanks and this praise does not belong to me, but it belongs to you. You have given me grace and apart from your grace, I wouldn't be able to do anything good or well. And then Matthew 6, 9 and 10, Jesus said, pray then in this way, our father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. You see, the passion, the greatest desire that Jesus had was that everyone would consider the name of His Father to be unique and to be supreme over all other names. Now, let's finish with, we exist to enjoy God. Now listen to what this says, Psalm 1611. Now young people, children, listen to this. Because there's a great truth here that ought to control your life. It says, you will make known to me the path of life. God will teach you how to live And He will give you life. In your presence, in God's presence, there is fullness of joy. Do you know how much joy there is in God's presence? If you were to experience that joy right now, it would explode your mind and heart. It's too big. In order for you to fully experience the joy that God has, you have to be supernaturally strengthened. You have to be changed. But it says this, now listen. In your presence is fullness of joy, and in your right hand there are pleasures forever. Is it wrong to seek after pleasure? Absolutely not. You just have to seek in the right place. Does pleasure come from money or fame or all the things of this world? No. Pleasure comes from a relationship with God. With God. Now here's a command for you. Delight yourself in the Lord. That's what it says. Delight yourself in the Lord. Now, I'm going to share with you something, okay? Now listen. Listen very carefully. I'm a lot older than you. And I've been a Christian three or four times, six, seven times longer than some of you have been alive. But here's what I want you to hear. I can tell you this is the truth. Whenever I have turned my eyes away from Jesus, my life has turned to darkness. Whenever I put my eyes on Christ and I submit to His will, there's joy. There's joy. This world cannot give you the joy that God can give you. So what must we believe? do? What must we do? Acknowledge our sins before Him. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. How will you know that you have been saved? It will not be because your Father told you. It will be because the Holy Spirit bore witness to your heart that you were saved and you will begin to see your life changing. You'll desire Him. Oh, children, more than anything, I want you to know Christ. Because there's nothing apart from Him. 
All right, let's pray. Father, I pray that you take these truths. And Lord, work them into the hearts and minds of the children. Father, I pray that you would just fill the fathers with the Holy Spirit and with the word of God, renewing their mind, that they would take these truths and teach them to their children. And that, Father, they would seek humbly and with a broken heart to live out these truths before their children. Lord, help us as fathers to do the work that you have given us to do. Help us, Lord. Help us. We are so weak and so needy. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, God bless. God bless. Brother Brad.